Okay, so to fix this, I think what I might do is actually see if I can get rid of this uh, this rusty colored uh, crap down here on the base. Okay, so that's on this layer here, our color variation layer. Um, that's causing that, as you can see, if you turn it off. Alright, so I think what I might do is actually just delete it off the base on that layer. Okay, so I'm going to drag a selection around the base with the selection tool. Okay, and we'll just grab this one while we're at it. Holding down shift, okay, just to add to our selection. And on the color variation 2 layer, I'm just going to delete that by hitting delete. Okay, I think it's a little too intense. Alright, so that's a little better. It's back to our, our gray that we want. Um, we might still have to tone it down a little bit, but uh, we can always worry about that later. Okay, and I was actually um, planning on adding, you know, some stuff splattered on here, so um, I think if we do that, it's going to be really, really intense looking, so I might try to fix that right now, okay, before we add any kind of splattered uh, stuff on there. Alright, so let's go down to our base dirt layer. Okay, and that's the one that's... Uh, causing all this uh, dark stuff up here. Alright, so what I might do on that one is just actually see if I can erase a bit of it. Alright, so let's go to the eraser, and again, I'm just going to uh, kind of take this down a little bit on the upper part, just randomly. And you can mask this out if you want to. Alright, so just like that, maybe, just to get some of our color back, and it doesn't look so uh, crazy intense now. Okay, so I think that's a little bit of an improvement. Um, again, we will uh, make some tweaks later on. Okay, so let's just check this out in Max before we uh, go any farther. Alright, so I'm going to save it. Jump back into Max, and uh, we'll just take a look here. Alright, so it's a little better. It's still looking a little too intense, I think, down here. A little too dark. Okay, so we'll go back. So let's tone this down a little bit. All right, so I'm just going to go down to the uh, the base grime layer right here. Okay, that's the one that's uh, pretty dark there. So let's take the uh, opacity down a little bit on this, just to tone it down a bit, so it's not so uh, wicked intense. All right, I might go down to maybe 60% or so on the opacity. Okay, so that's a little bit of an improvement. All right, so I think we can move on. And we'll uh, add some stuff splattered on here, just so it looks like, you know, stuff got kicked up. Alright, so let's just do a quick save, now that we made those changes. Alright, so let's open up uh, another map. And I have these uh, two splatter patterns here. Um, we'll probably end up using both of them, but I'm going to try the uh, first one first. Okay, so we'll open up that. Alright, this is obviously, you know, larger splatter. Um, so let's copy it, Control a Control c and uh, we'll paste this on, control V. All right, so let's uh, shrink it down with control T. All right, scale it on the corner with uh, shift. And again, you know, this will depend on how, um, you know, dirty and wrecked you want your uh, box to look. You don't have to add all this stuff. All right. You don't want to overdo it. All right, so we'll just try it. If it doesn't look right, we'll get uh, rid of it. Okay, so let's put it like that maybe, and then we'll uh, copy it and paste it, control A, C, and V. All right, I'm just going to kind of towel this along the bottom. So I'm going to flip that one horizontally. And we'll get rid of some of the stuff that tiles in a second. Just want to kind of fill the whole uh, span here, so paste again. All right, let's flip this one horizontally. Okay. All right, so let's combine them. All three, control E. All right, and we'll just uh, tone this down a bit. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just delete the upper part of it. So it's not overlapping our uh, top. All right, so we'll delete, get rid of it. And I'm just gonna see if I can use the healing brush to get rid of some of this stuff here. Okay, so we'll alt click. All right, I'm just gonna try to paint some of this out. It might not work too good on this, which doesn't look like it's going to, but uh, we'll try. Just get rid of it. We're going to change the blend mode so you don't have to worry about it uh, too much if it's perfect. All right, we'll just take some of it out so it doesn't look like it's just repeating over and over again. Okay, maybe just like that. And again, you can take more time and actually, you know, get it the way you want. Uh, if 
For the sake of speed, though, I'm just going to uh, leave it like that. Okay, so let's set the uh, mode here to multiply for the blend options. Okay, and that's going to take it down to a pretty dark color again, so let's lower the opacity to brighten it up. And again, I want these to be really, really subtle. Um, so we'll just do maybe like 40%, just so you can see them a little bit. Okay, but not overpowering. And let's name it something. Okay, I'm just going to call it maybe uh, Base Splatter Large. All right, because I think I'll add some smaller uh, splatter marks as well. Okay, so we'll do that. Okay, so let's open up our smaller splatter pattern. All right, splatter two. Okay, and these are really tiny uh, droplets, so we'll just copy the whole thing again and uh, go back to our map. All right, and just paste it on top of our splatter large with Control V. Okay, and let's do Control T on it. All right, I'm going to scale these down pretty small. Just want to give the appearance that maybe some, you know, mud or, um, you know, water drops or other crap got uh, splashed up onto the bottom of our box. So we're gonna take it down pretty small, All right? And I think I'll get rid of the top of this, so I'm just gonna worry about having it along the bottom. Okay, let's uh, undo that. I'm just gonna copy this layer again. Control A, C, and V. I'm just going to try to hide this seam in the crack there, so you won't really notice it. Okay, and let's flip it. Control T, right click, flip horizontal. Okay. Get them kind of lined up. Alright, let's combine both layers. Layer 1 and 2, Control E. Then we'll copy that. Control A, C, and V. Paste it again, and then we'll just continue along here. Okay, just like that, and let's combine those two. 2 and 3, Control e Okay, and let's just name it while we're at it, before we forget. So I'm just going to call this uh, Base Bladder Small. Okay. And we'll set the mode to uh, Multiply on this guy as well. Alright, and I think I'm going to maybe use a mask to get rid of this top uh, edge here, but first I'm just going to do a save. Okay. Alright, I might actually move this layer down a little bit so it's a little closer to the bottom. Alright, we'll just go so maybe the stuff's on just the bottom half. Alright, so it's not all over the place. Okay, like that. And let's go up here, we can actually just close some of these. I'm just going to get rid of this and this one. Okay, and we don't really need this open either, so let's close that. Alright, so we'll, I think I'll use a mask for this, uh, so I'm just going to go out and open up uh, one of my grunge maps. Right, back in the texture source folder. Okay, and I'm just going to use the grunge 2 one again that we used earlier. Alright, so we'll open this up, and I'm just going to actually invert it with Control i Okay, and when you're working with a mask, um, everything black or dark is going to be hidden, and everything white is going to actually show through from the layer underneath. Okay, so we'll just invert it. Okay, and let's do Control A and Control C, and we'll close that and just go back, all right, into our uh, splatter small layer. And I'm just going to go down here and hit this button here, which is uh, Add Layer Mask. Okay, hit that, and then I'm going to click on the mask box, all right, and we'll just go into the channels, all right, and I'm going to turn on the uh, mask channel here, okay, and we'll just paste with Control V. All right, it's going to paste and it's going to show up red. Okay, so we'll just position it. Alright, I might actually stretch this to fit the whole width, okay. So we'll do Control T, and then I'm just going to shift drag the corner. Alright, just to get the uh, full width. Okay, and we'll just maybe move this down, I'm just going to hit enter. Alright, maybe something like that. Okay, and then we'll just go back to the layers uh, panel, and just click on our... Uh, map box there, okay? Alright, as you can see it actually hid quite a bit of our uh, our splatter pattern there. You can always disable the mask by right clicking on it and just say disable layer mask to see the difference, okay? And then click it to turn it back on. Alright, so I think it might have hid a little too much. Uh, there's really no indication that that's even there, so what I might do is just click on the mask again and we'll just do a, a levels adjustment on it. So image adjustments, uh, levels, okay? And I might just tweak this a bit to see if we can get some of our splatter pattern back. Okay, so I'm just going to move this over a bit. 
All right, because this is going to actually brighten up the mask, um, it's going to let more of that show through. All right, you can see it kind of coming back there. All right, so we'll just tweak it a bit, just so we get some of it back. Okay, and then we'll say okay. All right, so that's a little better there. Um, you can see we got a bit of a seam across the top here. All right, so I'm just going to try to get rid of that. So I'm just going to make sure the mask is active, and I'm just going to paint with black right on the mask. Okay, so we'll go to the paintbrush, and I'm just using a, a soft uh, brush for this. Okay, I might make this a little bigger. Okay, and I just have black as my color, and I'm just going to paint actually on the mask. Okay, so it'll hide that seam, as you can see. Right, you might have to adjust this, uh, you know, based on your brightness. But I'm just going to get rid of it until I can't see it anymore. Okay, and you can see where you're painting uh, in the mask there. Okay, so that's probably good for this. Alright, so let's do another save. Okay, so we don't have too much left to do. Uh, we're getting pretty close, but uh, before we actually start painting our scratches and dings in the paint, uh, we should probably just add the remaining text that we uh, haven't done yet. Okay, so I'm just going to open up that reference picture I uh, had earlier, this one here. Alright, so up at the top here we have some text on the actual door for the slot, and we also have it on the handle here for the upper door. Okay, so for this we'll just use the text tool and actually type it in. So let's go back and uh, I might actually put the text layer right above the collection times layer here. Okay, so we'll just select that and then we'll uh, zoom in here on the upper door. Alright, we want it right on this edge here, so let's go to the text tool and we'll just click. Okay, and we'll just type in what we need. And like I mentioned in the intro, I can't read French at all, so I just went ahead and wrote it down earlier, so I know what I need to put here. Okay, and we're going to do it in capitals. Alright, so we'll just put poll. And then we have a dash, okay, and then we have the French, which is T-I-R-E-Z, okay, no idea what it uh, actually says, I assume it's pole, but who knows. Alright, so we'll just move that down and kind of center it on the uh, the middle of this uh, lip here, okay, and then let's actually open up the character box. So I'm going to go into the window menu, down to character, alright, we'll just open this up. Okay, so I'm going to use Arial uh, text, and I'm going to do bold. And we'll use maybe 10 pixels on this. The size looks pretty good. Okay. And I have 400 set here for the kerning. And I also have 135% in the uh, text height here, if you want to match it. Okay. And for the color, I'm just going to open that up. Uh, and I already know what color I want to use here because I, I did a test earlier. Okay. So I'm just going to type it into the, uh, the number box down here. Okay. And it's uh, 475, 489. Okay. I just figure that's pretty close to the color we need. Okay and you can adjust it if you uh, if you want to. All right, so we'll do that, use these uh, settings here. And then uh, just to give it a, you know more of the appearance that's actually kind of punched into the surface, I'm just going to add a layer effect to this layer. Okay? So let's go up to layer down to layer style and we'll go over and I'm just going to add an inner shadow to it. Okay? So we'll open this up. All right, and what I'm going to try to do is just give the appearance that's actually kind of recessed in a little bit. Okay? So for the color here, let's just uh, open that up and we'll just do kind of a darker version of what color we have, the purplish, okay? I mean, the effect's going to be really, really subtle anyway, so we don't need to worry about the color too much. All right, we'll just choose a darker shade, like that. Again, use whatever shade you want, okay? And I'm going to leave the angle at 120, and the distance, I'm going to take it down to maybe one pixel. All right, and for the size here, when we lower that, you'll notice it looks more noticeable, gets sharper, okay? So I'm going to take the size right down to zero. Okay, and it looks a little too intense. Let's take the opacity down too. All right, just a bit. Let's go down to maybe like 40 or 50. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. And okay. All right, so that's probably fine for that. Again, it is really, really tiny. All right, so I'm just going to try to center it. All right, so that's probably good for the uh, the first text layer. Okay, and we still have one more to go. All right, we got the push up here on this door, so let's do that. Okay, before we do that though, I'm just going to do a save. Alright, so let's just uh, navigate over to uh, the slot, which is up at the top here. Right, just get this out of the way. Alright, and I think for this one, I'm actually going to just put it above the uh, slot metal layer. Okay, so let's go back to the text tool, and we'll just uh, click up here. 
All right, and again, um, I did some tests ahead of time, so I know what uh, size I'm going to use. All right, I'm going to try maybe 12. All right, and for the color here, I'm just going to change that to maybe just a darker gray. Okay, and let's just type it. So we needed to say uh, push. Okay, and then we have a dash, and then the French, which is uh, P-O-U-S-S-E-Z. Okay, just like that. All right, let's just check the reference picture again. Okay, so it might need to go a little bigger on the text. All right, so let's just select it with the text tool. All right, let's take the size up to maybe 14, just so it's a little taller. Okay, and we'll just move it down and kind of center it in the middle of our slot here. All right, and I'm just going to see what it looks like on regular. All right, you'll notice the text is a little thinner here than it is down here. Um, and we use bold for the blower stuff, so let's maybe just switch this to aerial regular. Okay, 14 pixels, and I still have the uh, height set at 135 and 400 for the kerning. All right, and I think that's probably fine. So we'll just close the uh, character box. All right, so let's add our little text effect to this as well. So we'll go into the layer menu, layer style, inner shadow. Okay, and for this, we'll basically do it the same way. So I'm going to take the distance down to maybe one pixel, size down to zero. Okay, and let's put a color in here. All right, it's going to be really slight on this one because we're not using, you know, very thick text. So it's going to be kind of hard to see. So I'm just going to use maybe... Uh, a lighter shade of gray. All right, I might take the distance down to zero here, just because I think if we go up, we're not even going to notice it. Okay, so we'll do zero, 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 120, and let's just tweak this. All right, you'll see it's not, you know, making much difference here. It's probably really not even going to be noticeable. So we'll just uh, do it at 40 again and just leave it. Okay, and if you want to tweak that, that's uh, fine. You can, but we'll just move on. All right, so the effect's really slight. Um, I'm just going to turn my UVs on again. I just want to make sure it's actually centered on here. All right, from top to bottom. Okay, looks pretty good. So we'll say that's cool for the uh, second text layer. All right, let's just close up the effects uh, drop down there, and we'll do another save now that that's done. All right, so let's just zoom back out so we can actually see our map. I'm just going to close that reference picture again. We don't really need it. Okay, so let's go over to Max and actually uh, see how it looks. All right, so I think we're we're about the right size. All right, this looks like it could go up a little bit, maybe. Um, this one looks okay. I might just move this one up just slightly. All right, but we won't worry about it too much. All right, let's just uh, zoom in here on the top. Okay, with our text layer selected, I'm just going to push it up just slightly. Okay, and then we'll save again. All right, back over to Max, just see if that uh, looks a little better. All right, so that's more centered. All right, so that's not looking too bad. And I think we can start actually painting in the uh, scratches and damage to the paint now. Okay, so to do that, I'm just going to make a new layer. Okay, so let's maybe put it above the uh, color variation 2 layer for now. And we might reorder these after, but for now we'll stick it here, so create a new layer above it. Okay, and we'll just make a quick custom brush that we can actually use to paint our scratches. All right, just make it a little quicker and easier to do. Okay, so let's go to the paintbrush. All right, I'm just going to go up here to the pull down and just change it to chalk build up. Okay, and we'll start with that. All right, I'm also going to change the size a little bit. I want to have it a bit smaller, so we'll do maybe like 11 or 12 pixels. Okay, I like to use a small brush when I do it. All right, and then let's open up the uh, brush panel. All right, you can hit F5 or you can find it in the window menu here, brushes. Okay, and this will just let you actually tweak your brush tip. Okay, so let's go up to the shape dynamics first. I'm just going to turn off dual brush here. All right. So in the shape dynamics, we'll just tweak some of these sizes and try to get this to look more like a scratch kind of pattern. Okay, so I'm going to take the size jitter way up to like 95% or so. All right, I'm going to switch this control to pen pressure because I will be using a tablet to actually paint my scratches. Um, and if you have a tablet, I'd highly rec recommend uh, using a tablet to do that because it's going to be a hell of a lot easier to do with a tablet than it would be with the mouse. Um, it's not impossible to do it with a mouse, it's just going to be a lot more time consuming and hard to get it to look uh, the way you want. You'll have to keep tweaking your brush, okay? So yeah, if you have a tablet, I'd use it. If you don't have a tablet, I'd uh, recommend buying one for sure. Uh, it's a really good investment to make. Um, they're not that expensive. I just have a tiny little Wacom tablet that's like 3 by 5 inches. It's the smallest one they make, but uh, you know, it makes this stuff a lot easier. And if you do any kind of sculpting in ZBrush or you know, Mudbox, it's pretty much a must-have. So yeah, good investment to make. 
All right, so I'm just going to change it to uh, pen pressure because I'm going to be using the pen, okay? And the minimum diameter, I'm just going to tweak that a little bit. Let's take it up like 5%. All right, angle jitter, we'll tweak. All right, you can see down here in real time, it updating it. Okay, so we'll just go until it looks about right. Take that down a little bit. Do like 9, okay? And then I'm going to leave the uh, control here off for that, okay? The roundness jitter, I'm going to take that up a little bit. Let's go up pretty high, we'll go up to maybe 50 or 60 percent. I'm going to leave the control for that off as well, and I'm just going to tick on flip X and flip Y, okay? And let's go into the scattering menu, okay? And for the scatter, I'm just going to tick on both axes, okay? And we'll just tweak this a little bit. All right, this is pretty touchy, as you can see, if you go up too high, it's going to break it apart. So we'll keep it low, maybe like 9 or 10 percent. Okay, I'm going to leave the control for that off as well. The count, I think I'll leave at 1. All right, we don't want it to be too dense, so let's leave that at 1, and the count jitter I'm going to take up pretty high. Let's go up to like 90%, okay, and I am going to set this one to uh, pen pressure as well. Okay, so basically a little scratchy looking brush, okay, and you can tweak that, you know, more if you want to, but we'll say that's cool. All right, so let's just close this. All right, so for my scratches, I'm actually going to paint them in white. Okay, so I'm just going to switch my color to white, and OK. All right, and I'm just going to save one more time before we start doing this. OK, so yeah, I'm going to do my scratches white, and uh, that's just because I'm not planning on doing any huge uh, paint chips or massive scratches. I'm just going to kind of rough up the edges a little bit and just do some smaller scratches. And uh, typically when I've seen scratches on mailboxes, uh, usually they're pretty much white. Um, I guess that's just because it's not you know deep enough to go down to the metal underneath, but it's just into the primer layer under the paint. Okay, so for this, white's probably going to work. Uh, but you might want to change that up depending on what you're doing. Um, if you're doing something with you know some pretty huge paint chips and uh, you know larger areas of paint missing, you might not want to use white because it's probably not going to look right. So what you could do in that case, or you could even do it on your mailbox if you want to, is uh, you could just add an image of you know some bare metal underneath your paint layer, and then just add a mask to the paint layer and just paint in there. Um, so you'll see the bare metal um, where the scratches are. Okay, but in our case um, for this, I think white's going to be fine. Okay, so I'm just going to do that because it's a little quicker. Okay, but feel free to uh, do it a different way if you want to. All right, so so I'm just on my layer one here, our new layer, and uh, we'll just go in and uh, start painting. Okay, so I'm just going to go in on the top of the body here. All right, we'll zoom in. Okay, let's actually turn our UVs back on so we can see where our edges are. All right, just so we know where, where the damage is going to probably take place. All right, I'm just going to set the opacity for the UV layer down a bit. All right, we'll lower it so we can still see it, but we can actually see through a little better. Okay, so we'll take it down to maybe like 15 or so, just so we can barely see it. Okay, and then we'll just go back to the paintbrush, and I'm just going to start going in here and adding some subtle scratches. Let's just make sure our pass is uh, all the way up to 100%. And I have my flow set to 71% here. Okay, and let's just make sure we're actually on the right layer when we do this. All right, so we'll go back to layer one, select it, and we'll just start kind of roughing up the edges here. And, uh, you know, you can really take your time when you're doing this. Um, I'm going to have to go a little quicker than I normally would just for the sake of the tutorial, but um, feel free to, you know, go along and really take your time and, and get them the way you want and where you want them. But, uh, yeah, I'll just try to do this as quick as possible just so you don't have to... Uh, watch me do it for you know two hours all right so I'm just gonna start up here on the corner and just kinda add some subtle rough looking little patches okay and obviously the corners uh, on the edges there would be typically where you you know really damage the the mailbox from you know it getting hit or whatever all right so I'm just gonna go along and just kinda lay them out we can go back and you know kinda fine tune them just gonna figure out where I wanna put them first all right so we'll do a little bit on the back here and we got to keep in mind that we do have our top actually above this piece, so this is just the edge of the seam, all right? So we don't want to totally hammer it because it's probably not going to be able to get, you know, completely hit uh, with the top blocking it. So I'm just going to go along and just kind of all right. You can always add some some little, you know, crisscrosses, maybe where it got scratched by something. You just want to be careful not to go, you know, right across the corner like that because it's not going to look right on the model, obviously. Because if it's on the back and you know someone scrapes it, they're not going to scrape it right to the corner and then around to the side. Okay. So when you do those ones, just you know, kind of stop at the edge, all right? So it looks more natural. Okay. So we'll just move around here. 
start laying out our placement. And you can put these, you know, wherever you wherever you want to, you don't have to match what I'm doing. Again, I'm just gonna do it, you know, fairly quick. And normally I'd take, you know, quite a bit of time when I did this and, and really tweak it. You know, it's always a good idea also to vary the size of your brush so they all don't all look the uh, same. Okay, you can do that with the square brackets again. And this is really where the tablet uh, makes all the difference because of the pen pressure. Um, you know, you can go really, really light and get a thin little scratch, or you can go hard on the brush and get a fatter one. All right, so we'll just add a few. Nothing too major. Don't want to completely overdo it. So I'm just going to work around, kind of hit all the corners, or most of them anyway. I'm going to leave this one, you know, not totally hit, just so they all don't look the uh, the same. And you can also uh, rotate your brush tip if you want to when you're doing this. Uh, it's usually a good idea. Um, I'm using a really small brush, so it's it's probably not... You know, a huge deal if we don't do it, but um, you can do that just by uh, going into the brush panel again and just uh, clicking up here on the brush tip shape and then it'll let you actually spin your brush. All right, break it a little bigger. You can see that it changes the stroke down there. Okay, so typically I do that, you know, if I'm changing direction from vertical to horizontal, but again, I'm using such a small brush, it's not really a big deal. All right, so just close that. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of go around, just randomly. All right, and some of these, if they're too intense looking, when we look in max, we can always come in here and you know just take it down a bit or erase some parts. All right, I'm just going to move down to the actual top here, and we got to be careful here because of how I uh, laid the UVs out and I split it right on the corner of the top here. So one side of our scratch is going to be on one piece and the other side is going to be on the other piece. Okay, so you just want to be careful of that because if you paint a whole bunch on here like this and you don't touch this side, it's going to look weird because you're going to see that perfectly straight edge down the uh, center of our corner back in max. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of hit them both somewhat evenly just so it'll kind of hide this, the uh, seam on the model. Okay. And the top would probably typically get beat down the most, I would think, so maybe just hit this front edge here, that's our front one because we double chamfered it, so I'm just going to kind of go along and just maybe hit this one a little bit. Right, maybe I'll just do a kind of a scratch on the front. I might just scratch the top, maybe with a little streak. And again, you just want to try to, you know, kind of match them up here. So if you do it on the bottom one side, you want to do it on the bottom a little bit on the other side, just so it'll kind of match. And 
these might not be the most realistic looking uh, scratches, but that's okay. You can really take your time and, and fine tune them if you want to. But again, I'm just trying to be as quick as I can. Alright, so the uh, upper door here, um, that's probably going to take a, you know, a fair bit of abuse from people grabbing it and you know banging stuff into it. So let's just maybe hit this a little bit. It's going to kind of hit the edges. You can always turn your uh, UVs off too if it makes it easier to see the actual edge. This part here would be sticking out a little bit, so I'll hit that. You can always put a couple little scrapes on there. And maybe across here. Alright, we'll just continue on, move it along. I'm just going to hit this one a little bit where the seam would be. And maybe on the lower corners, it might get hit there when they uh, open it up to unload the box. Alright, and for the keyhole here, um, obviously when they open that up, the keys are going to smash the surface over and over and over again. Um, so I'm just going to kind of ding this little piece here on the lip, just with some random little scratch marks, so it looks like maybe it got chipped by the keys. Alright. Maybe hit this edge a little bit. Okay, and we'll just keep moving. Move over to this one. This one would probably take it uh, pretty good too, so let's just hit the corners. Alright, on the bottom of our slanted piece that would probably get hit too. So I'll just kind of... shrink my brush a little bit. And you want to try to get this right on the edge if you can. Alright, maybe down here. This part would uh, be where the hinge is when they open up that door, so it would probably take some abuse. I'm just going to turn off the UVs, it's a little easier to see. miss the edge there, I'm just going to go to the eraser and just get rid of that. Alright, and if there's any that, you, you know, you can just lay them in. If they don't really look right, you can just go back and just, you know, get rid of them until you're uh, happy. Okay, maybe like that. I'm just taking a look here. So let's zoom out. Alright, so I'm just going to do a save here quickly, and we'll check it out max and see if we have to uh, remove any of these or tone them down a bit. Alright, so save. Okay, so let's just jump over to max and just take a look. Okay, so... I might have overdone it a little bit, I think. This one's not really looking right up here on the top, so I'm thinking I'm going to get rid of that. Um, not really liking the look of all these little tiny lines here, so I think I might take a couple of those out as well. Let's just check the corners out up here. Okay, you can see right here where the seam was. It kind of looks weird, so we're going to have to tweak that too. Okay, so let's jump back over to uh, Photoshop. Okay, and let's just zoom in on this uh, top piece here. Alright, we'll go to the eraser. Okay, so I think I'm going to get rid of some of this here. Right, you can kind of use the eraser to break them up um, if you go really, really light on it. All right, or you can change the uh, brush tip to uh, something a little regular and just kind of break these up a bit. But uh, I think I'm going to kind of get rid of this one. Let's turn our UVs back on. I'm just going to zoom in here. 
So I'm going to kind of get rid of some of it. I think it looked a little too blotchy. Alright, break this up a bit, maybe. Alright, this one up on top, I'm not really loving that either, so I'm just going to take it out for now. Okay, I think it's a little too fat looking. Alright, so let's zoom back out. Alright, so on the corner up here, just going to go back to the brush and just uh, maybe just hit this a little bit more on the corner. Let's zoom out a bit. I think I'm in too close. Alright, this one might be a little too intense, but we'll see how it looks. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of fold the edges down a bit. Alright, and this one up on the back might be a little too big as well. Okay, so I'm just going to try to erase some of it. And, you know, you again, take your time and, you know, really fine-tune these. I'm just trying to be really quick, so uh, normally I'd spend quite a bit of time uh, going back and forth, but uh, you can do that. Alright, so let's turn the UVs off and we'll just do a save and just check that out. Okay, back in max. And they will look better when we actually, you know, have lighting in here and a spec map. But, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to dump that one right there. These look a little too intense, I think, here. I don't think this would get chipped that much. Uh, and this looks a little strange, too. Okay, so let's go back in to Photoshop. Alright, so I'm just going to go up on the top corner of the body here and just maybe break this up a little bit. Alright, so we'll use a really small eraser brush, and I'm just going to kind of go in here and take a little bit of it away. Let's break up this. Check our UVs. Okay, let's get rid of this little guy here, maybe. up a little bit. I think it's a little too long looking. Okay, and let's we'll continue on. Uh, this one I might leave a little more intense and big. Let's break that up a bit. Alright, this one looks kind of off the edge, so let's just get rid of some of that. Alright, let's go up here. So up on the top here, I think this one's a little too uh, insane. Okay, so let's tone it down a little bit. I'm just going to kind of erase some of it. All right. I don't think I want it to go all the way down the, uh, the corner there, so I'll take some of it out. Same up on this side, try to get rid of some of it. And I mean, again, this will depend on how, you know, how damaged you want yours to look. Um, you can go more or less. It's up to you. Alright, so the one on the front, I'm not loving it, so let's just get rid of it completely. Okay, and some of these ones on the front uh, of the doors here. It looks a little overdone, so I'm just going to maybe trash these guys up here. Maybe this one. Alright, let's get rid of this little scratch here too. Right, we can always go back and add them if we, if we feel it needs it, but I think it's looking a little too sporadic. Alright, so let's get rid of this one. 
And I might get rid of this one as well. Alright, this one doesn't look that great, so I'm going to take it out and just maybe paint it again. Okay, so we'll go back to the paintbrush. I'm just going to shrink the brush down pretty small and just hit this again quickly. Okay, and you don't have to hit every single corner. Um, it might look better if they're not on every corner. A little more realistic, so I might just take this one off as well. Okay. Alright, so let's turn the EVs off again, and I'll just go back and save, and we'll check it out in Max one more time. Alright, so a little better. Um, and again, you know, the damage on this thing and the condition is, is way overdone, obviously. Um, you know, you're never going to see a mailbox that's this uh, hammered and beat down, but uh, that's okay, just for the sake of the tutorial, it doesn't matter. Alright, so that's a little better. Right, I don't think I like this one up here, so I might get rid of that one. Okay, so let's go back to uh, Photoshop. Okay, and I'm just going to get rid of it. It's right here. Take that down a bit. A little too big, I think. Alright, so just take one more look. See if there's anything else I want to change. And again, you can take, you know, all day doing this. But I don't want to spend too much time on it, so let's just save and we'll see if that's uh, good enough for these guys. Okay, I think the last one I'm going to do is just maybe tone down this guy here. Um, and this also doesn't look right because if this was scratched, obviously the top right by it is going to be scratched as well. And I only have it on the bottom, so you can either add some to the top to make it look like it blends the two pieces together or take it out entirely. I think I might just tone it down a bit. And this one here on the corner, I think I'm going to tone that down a little bit too. Okay, so let's go back one more time. So these guys up here. Right back to the eraser. This one not loving it, so let's just tone it down a bit. Might leave a little bit of it there, but not that much. Okay, and this one I think looked a little too long, so let's maybe just break that up a bit. Okay. And that one too. Alright, so just take one last look. I just don't want every corner to be, you know, scratched the exact same. Alright, so we'll get rid of some of that guy. Alright, the front I think is okay. Um, let's maybe take a little bit off this one. Straighten that one up maybe. Alright, I might also take this one off a bit. Alright, so I think we'll say that's good enough. Um, I don't want to spend too much time, like I said. So, you can go uh, as much as you want until you're happy. And let's just check it out one last time, make sure it's okay. Okay, so that's probably uh, good enough. Um, so what I'm going to do next is just add maybe some scuffs to the bottom just so they kind of match. All right, because that's going to get kicked and stuff um, and ding just like the top would. Okay, so we should add some up there. All right, so let's go back to Photoshop.